creating an asset tag in CorelDRAW using the table layout command. Here's an asset tag that was given to me one of my customers and asked for me to lay this out in CorelDRAW. I could have just typed in text and laid it on in separate columns. However, for this example, I'm going to use the table layout command that's available in X4 and X5. I've already preset my guidelines up and my page size is 4 inches by 2.75 inches wide. First select the table tool. It's located in the toolbox on the left hand side. Next, before we generate our table, make sure that you've got your columns and rows laid out. In this case I've got seven rows and three columns. You notice when I have the table command activated, I've got a number of different options that show up in the property bar, such as line width, such as the thickness of the line, which borders I want to select a line width. First of all, before I go ahead and generate my table, I'm going to give it the default settings for the font and the font height and the justification. Select styles, default paragraph text, and we're going to type in a size, which in this case is 0.125. I'm going to use the Arial font, and I'm going to use a left-hand justification. Click OK, and just select OK. This one will make these the defaults for any paragraph text that I generate in this job. Seeing the table text as paragraph text, and this is the one that we need to use. So drag out, and our table is created on our layout. I have turned the snap to guidelines on so the table snaps the guidelines. Next select the shape tool and once the shape tool is selected you notice everything turns into multicolors and I can actually select and grab each one of the individual tables and slide them in or out. Next select the text tool and just click in one of the cells that's in the table. Notice that my cursor is flashing. This indicates that text now can be inputted into this cell. So I'm just going to type in the name of the field. Notice that my font, my text type, and my justification are what I set in the options menu. So all I need to do now is keep clicking in each one of the tables and type in my text. Now, in our right cell, if we remember from our original image, the text in this column was center justified. So, because the default is left, we'll need to change this justification now to center. So, click our text inside the box and let's change the center. Now, you notice the cursor is flashing in the middle of the box and when I start typing, the text is actually in the center of the box. Again, back to center, to the justification, select center justified, and start typing. So all we're going to do is select a box, select center justification, type in our value, select the box, center justification. Now, 
if you're really good, you can actually just use the Control plus the E key, and this is the hot key for creating center justification. Control L is left and Control R is right. This only works when we're actually in text mode, but it allows me not to have to go up to the property menu and select the pull down menu and select the proper justification, which in this case is center. So all you're going to do is just select Control E and then start typing. Now one thing to notice on this box of text that I'm actually generating right now is this text actually will go outside the boundaries of the actual text box and the box will turn red. The red indicates that we actually have text that's hidden inside the box. Again, we don't want to have hidden text, so we're going to have to expose this text. There's a couple of ways we can do this. One is we can actually just go text, paragraph text to frame, and fit text to frame. This will actually allow our text to be fitted in the frame. If I undo this, I can also use select the table tool, select inside the box with the table command, and notice that I'm going to have the margins set up. The margins allow me to now change the top, bottom, or left hand, right side of the margin. If I click the lock button, this does all the margins the same, or if I unlock it, I can do each margin individually. In this case, I'll just make the left and right margins 0 0.02, which will allow me to have the text exposed. Notice now the text is fine and the cell is actively seen for all the value that's, that are in it. There is one other way I can actually affect the condensing of a text. That is a select the text in the frame cell, go to paragraph formatting, I'll get a docker that opens up. Now what it allows me to do is to actually select the spacing command, select the text, go into text mode, swipe the line that I want to work with, and I can just affect the spacing between the character. Again, if I use zero, I'm right at the edge, and if I want to increase it, I actually lose the text. If I decrease it, I'll actually bring the text back. And again, I can condense the text. So this is a way of manually condensing your text while you're in paragraph mode. Because remember, you can't just select a text and drag it in like you can on artistic text. Now that our text is created in both the columns, all we need to do now is generate the dashes that are inside the middle column. And we'll just generate a dash. I want a longer dash, so I'm going to use the underscore dash. I'm going to make it center justified and I'm going to swipe the text and I'm just going to copy this text. I'm just going to zoom in on the area here make it a little easier to see. Swipe the text. Control C is copy. Now I can just go to each one of the cells that I want to work on. Select a cell. Control E and paste. Select the cell. Control E. Paste. Select cell, control E, paste. Select the cell, control E, center justified, paste. And just repeat all the way down. Now I'm almost done with this page here. The only other thing, the only other issue that's going on here is that my dashes are sort of at the bottom of my text. So I really want to make everything a little bit more in the middle. This can be easily done in this setup here. All I really need to do is just select the text that I'm working on, select the see I've got the text selected here, I'm going to select the table tool, I'm going to click inside the cell that I'm working on, and I can actually affect the where the justification is, which in this case I want it to be center vertical alignment. This brings the text into the center of the cell as opposed to, by default, being at the top of the cell. And notice when I do all my cells, they all go into the center. You can see now that all my dashes are lined up with my text. 
So you need to redo this for each one of the cells. Now the last thing I need to do is on this table is to thicken up the border, which I'm going to use the outside border. I'm going to select that. It's already be by default selected, but I'll just show you here. I'm going to go to a 0 0.014 line thickness, and again it's black, and you notice that the line gets thicker. I also want to delete the inside lines because, again, I don't want those done. So I'm just going to select the X in my color menu, which gets rid of all the outline of any of my inside cells. And there you are. I'm done. Finish the tag and ready to engrave it.